Nearly all of my patients struggle with sleep, and you probably do too, because one in five Americans uses a sleep aid. But you know that sleep aids can make us feel groggy or feel unrefreshed in the mornings. That's because sleep aids don't promote natural sleep. And some sleep aids even go farther and can damage the brain and increase the risk of dementia. I'll go through the most common sleep aids so you know which ones are safer than others. And I'll share the most natural ways to restore sleep that most doctors don't discuss, especially with hormones, which many of my patients get gaslit over. So definitely stick around for that at the end because I want your sleep to be rejuvenating, not stressful. Number one is gabapentin, and we used to think it was the ideal sleep medication because it can promote deep sleep, but it comes at a cost. In non-elderly patients prescribed gabapentin, it was shown to have a more than doubling the risk of mild cognitive impairment and dementia compared to patients not prescribed gabapentin. That study was specifically looking at gabapentin for a low back pain, but I'd expect the same to apply for sleep because there was a dose dependency making it very believable to me because the higher the frequency of prescription to gabapentin, the higher the risk of dementia. On top of that, gabapentin can have nasty withdrawals making it difficult to taper off of. So while I'm not anti-gabapentin, most of my patients were never told about these side effects, especially that withdrawal potential, and it's so important to talk about the risks of any medication before you start, especially when there are safer alternatives for sleep aids. Number two are the classic benzodiazepines like Xanax, Ativan, or Valium. Some studies show concerning risks like up to a 70% higher odds of developing dementia, especially in studies from Asia where the risk is 240% higher. It's not clear why certain ethnic groups have such elevated risk and it makes us hard to generalize this risk across the population. It's very important though to recognize that rapid-acting benzodiazepines in women carry the highest risk. The rapid-acting benzodiazepines are lorazepam and alprazolam, or Ativan and Xanax as defined by the study. And once again, there was a dose dependent response. And we'll talk about women at the end because of the critical hormonal link that they often get gaslit for, which can worsen their dependency on these potentially dangerous sleep aids. Fortunately, not all studies show the dementia risk with benzodiazepines, but a concerning study from 2024 showed active benzodiazepine users had smaller brain volumes, specifically in the memory storage part of the brain called the hippocampus. So while data is still incoming on benzodiazepines, pains and dementia risk, there are plenty of reasons to avoid benzodiazepines when it's safe to do so. Like to avoid the risk of dependence, withdrawals, falls and bone fractures, depression, and more. Next are the Z drugs like Zolpidem or Ambien or Lunesta. Like the benzodiazepines, they have mixed data, but women appear more affected than men. People who have higher cumulative doses also appear to have higher risk of dementia, like from this cohort in Taiwan. The takeaway is not to fear much but to avoid long-term use whenever possible and to minimize use in at-risk groups like women. The FDA specifically calls out Z drugs for what are called complex sleep behaviors that include pretty scary things like being burned, shooting themselves, and even wandering outside in the cold. The point is that Z drugs can cause people to do things that they don't remember, which can make them dangerous even outside the risk of dementia. Next is another classic, trazodone. Trazodone is an antidepressant commonly prescribed to help folks fall asleep at night, hence why you prescribe it at night. It was once thought that trazodone might actually reduce the risk for dementia, but that hasn't borne out in the data yet. Fortunately, it doesn't appear that trazodone increases the risk of dementia either. Now, the next sleep aid is the most common and also the most dangerous. Just as a reminder, if you've ever tried these sleep aids before, let me know your experience in the comments below and hit that like button if you're learning something new. So the big baddie is Benadryl or diphenhydramine. It has a high risk for dementia and it increases with cumulative dose. Given how common Benadryl is used for sleep, you should absolutely be discussing it with your doctor to try to find safer alternatives whenever possible to minimize that risk of dementia. Fortunately, there are many safer options. The most important might be the hormones that we'll talk about at the very end. So be sure to stick around for that. The first is melatonin. This endogenous sleepy molecule is 
fascinating. There is still a lot more for us to learn about how it works, but it does not appear to increase the risk of Alzheimer's dementia. In fact, it may even provide some symptomatic improvement. Other supplements I commonly prescribe for my patients in my sleep stack include valerian root, glycine, L-theanine, passion flower, and ashwagandha. You need to discuss any supplements or medications with your doctor before starting, but fortunately, these supplements have not yet shown an appreciable risk in dementia. The caveat is that studies are limited and it takes a long time of following patients to see who develops dementia or not, and that can be very expensive, making it hard to study. But the most critical disruptor of your sleep, at least in many of my patients, might lie deep inside your brain in the hypothalamus, the command center of your hormones. This is especially significant in women whose hormones are more complex because they have to go through menstrual cycles and menopause unlike men. But as you've seen, the risk of dementia from these other sleep aids is higher in women than in men, so it's important to treat hormone imbalances in women whenever it's safe to do so. And it's not just through hot flashes and depression, those hormones can independently disrupt sleep as well. This is also present in younger women, especially in the luteal phase of their menstrual cycle or the last two weeks when PMS symptoms might get a lot worse because of the rapid hormonal fluctuations. The good news is that it's often a single hormone that's out of balance, progesterone, and rebalancing it can appreciably improve sleep. Progesterone alone can improve many aspects of sleep with a favorable safety profile when used as part of a holistic health plan. Since women are at a higher dementia risk with conventional sleep, aids compared to men, you would think that hormones would be at the top of the list of things to discuss with your doctor. Sadly, I bet most women listeners out there struggling with sleep have never had the hormone discussion with their doctor though. And it might be worse in younger women who are more prone to being prescribed antidepressants for PMS symptoms and being gaslit over a potential hormonal imbalance that can be easily treated. So ask yourself, is it a Prozac deficiency or a progesterone deficiency that we're trying to treat here? In patients with other risk factors, for dementia like the ApoE4 gene, the history of heart disease, or stroke, these considerations are all the more important so you don't further increase that risk with these sleep aids. You can learn more about my approach to sleep and bioidentical hormone replacement therapy by visiting my San Francisco Clinic's website at www.claris-health.com. This is what I help my patients with every day, and you deserve the same with your doctor. So if you or a loved one has ever struggled with sleep, share what you've learned. Hit the like button and subscribe to keep up with all of my medical videos. And remember, you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told. Your hormones affect much more than your sleep. It can affect your entire mind and body, and it can show here in surgery. In this video, I share what happens to a patient whose hormones were not properly balanced and how it wreaked chaos when they were having surgery here in the operating room.